Well, hi guys, and welcome to this quick video introduction to the new functionality I've written for the image side of things inside JMonkey Engine. Uh, this video has actually mostly been done for my own benefit. I'm just experimenting a little bit with video capture and so on, but I figured I might as well try and do something productive whilst I was experimenting. So hopefully this is useful for some people. The first change that's been made is the existing image class which has had some new functionality added so that each of the individual formats now has the ability to know how to read and write data in that format. This isn't supported for all formats at this time. I've just implemented what I thought were going to be the most commonly needed ones and certainly all of the ones I've needed. Other people would find it quite easy now though to come in and add support for, for example, RGB10. You simply need to come in here and add an implementation for these methods and then at that point any images in that format you would now be able to use all of this image manipulation functionality with. So the most of the changes here have actually just been the implementation of those formats for the various ones and then the image class itself which has its calls through into that so you can call get pixel and set pixel directly on an image. The other thing that's been added in image is this nice little static method transcode image which just takes one image in any supported format and outputs another image of the same size in any other supported format. That should allow you know, very easy conversion between these different uh, input methods and output methods. So that was the first step. Now building on that I've created a brand new class called Image Painter and this is a fairly comprehensive image manipulation and editing suite. So it supports blend modes, these are the standard things like layer modes in Photoshop or GIMP um, where you can do uh, set which just sets the value to the incoming one and ignores the existing. You then get normal which allows you to mix using the alpha. Um, add, subtract, lighten only, darken only, multiply and screen, which are the standard image modes to use. The image painter itself can be constructed to either wrap an existing image and allow you to modify that existing image, or you can create it with a brand new image. And in fact, you'll see in most of the tests that's what's being done. Uh, so it will create the image for you, it will create the buffer of the correct size, and um, allow you to uh, modify it. Uh, the manipulation functions themselves, you've got to start from the simple stuff like being able to wipe it, set a rectangle to the specific colour, and then you can paint the rectangle with different blend modes and it comes down to the more advanced functionality like being able to paint gradients in, paint pixels and then onto the more useful stuff such as painting images which will actually allow you to take one image in any supported format and paste it into a section of another image in any supported format. Uh, from that we then move on to a few variants such as the stretched images which actually uses bilinear filtering and uh, scales the image and um, sub-image, so you can take a section of one image and paste it into a section of another image, again applying scaling as, as required. And in fact one of these modes actually supports colouring as well. So it can um, take the colour from the existing one, multiply it and paste it through, which is what's used for the text stuff we'll come to later. Uh, border image is similar to 9patch from Android or th one of the image modes in the nifty GUI system. So it's used a lot for GUI elements where you want a nice border around the image and it allows you to stretch the centre of the image whilst keeping the shape of the border correct. And in fact there is a paint border only image option as well for the case where you don't want the centre and you're just using the border and it will save the time that would be required to paint the centre. Uh, then we come on to the rotated images, so fairly standard of rotation. Um, the actual rotation algorithm itself, uh, I don't know what a standard one is, I just came up with something and it worked first time. It then took me about two hours to get the actual centre of the image positioning correctly which uh, was a bit frustrating but it all came together nicely in the end. Again that uses bilinear filtering and is a pretty efficient algorithm just stepping through rather than having to calculate rotations for each pixel. 
Um, then finally we come into the text side so your usual horizontal alignment vertical alignment there's a slightly unusual alignment here on the vertical which I've called elevated which is not centered but a little bit above center and I find that actually provides a more pleasing effect to the eye sometimes when you're positioning blocks of text inside an area and then using those enumerations we've got paint text line which takes a single line of text and puts it into an area it will overrun the borders of the area it's not clipped or anything else though it is clipped to the edges of the image um, from that you can then come to paint text area so that will take a block of text it will word wrap it at the horizontal bounds of the image although again it will overrun the top and bottom if you provide too much text for the space and finally we have this um, fitted text line which actually scales the text down if it's too large to fit inside the area uh, so that's useful if you've got a display where most of the time your text fits every now and then you get a particularly long name or whatever else you don't want it going outside the box it'll just scale it down um, without having to create a new bitmap font and select the right font based on the right size all of that stuff um, it's not recommended that that be used too much as you do lose some quality that way but it's it's fine for the um, small amounts of shrinkage that are needed in that sort of case um, and then finally we actually have a test class as well which when it's starting up it's just run a number of unit tests so that checks that all of the reading and setting and getting of pixels is consistent if you do a get red you get the same values if you do a get pixel then query the red and it also looks at um, does some tests with the binary format behind the scenes as well to make sure that's consistent so if you do add a new format in image you should really add one to these tests as well just to make sure that it's working correctly and in fact doing these tests I did find a few mistakes I'd made in the conversion logic and fixed them and then it comes through into a 3D scene so here you can see a number of generated images and this has all just been generated using this code um, the images at the front have actually then been using that transcode function transcoded all the way back into the different supported formats uh, so you can see here this initial um, square and it just takes the initial square, it doesn't update each frame as that would be too slow has been taken, it's been transcoded, so there's in RGBA8, BGR8, RGB8 etc um, and the actual initial squares I've selected a few different formats for those as well and you can see you know at to the eye you cannot see any difference at all depending on what format I've used the actual functionality you have here you have the gradient fill just being demonstrated you can see it's interpolating between the four colors the next square looks identical but is actually the resolution on the texture is twice as high and the texture from the first one has been scaled into it so you can see that the scaling has operated um, correctly um, that's just a checkable pattern that's generated to use for later tests and now here we have a number of uh, rectangles and it's using the various blend modes to just paint a randomly coloured rectangle into the square um, it paints a new rectangle every second and then every 30 seconds or so it wipes them uh, so you can see the different blend modes are working correctly and there was the wipe and now it's going through and it's adding more squares again. Uh, that's just put a painting the sub image in and now we can see an image being painted in at different areas and going off the edge of the um, edge it's being pasted into so you can see that that's coping correctly. Um, now we have um, opacity and blend modes so this is images being drawn onto another image and they're being drawn with different blend modes and different opacity and you can see that even though all of this functionality is being done in the CPU, it's not hardware accelerated at all, it's still fast enough that this, even whilst running the video capture, is still achieving over 20 frames a second with all of these various animations and so on going on. So I wouldn't recommend it to do anything particularly intensive, but it's certainly enough to do any small little animations or updating things dynamically as needed. Uh, now we come on to that border system so you can see the checkerboard pattern from before has been put in and around the edges you can see in the corner is the original size and then it's been stretched across the top stretched down the sides and then stretched across the center and then there is another example of the same but the dimensions of the uh, texture it's been pasted into and the size of the borders has been modified slightly 
Uh, now we come on to that rotation system. So you can see, just look, let me straighten up a little bit. So you can see there the image is being rotated, it's being spun around, it can move on and off the bounds of the image it's being pasted onto, and it's all working correctly. And then finally you come to the text with its positioning, um, various alignments and so on there. Here we have the longer text and word wrapping and such like. And then finally here is the text being scaled down as it gets too long to fit onto the area. So I hope that was a useful introduction to the new functionality and I hope some people find it useful. Thanks for listening and goodbye.